Hello, welcome to today's Bible reading. We're continuing in Numbers and we'll also be, uh, and we'll also be reading a Psalm, Psalm 64. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you so much that your word gives us insight, your word gives us wisdom, your word gives us direction and comfort. And today I pray that as we read your word, that is what we will experience. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Numbers chapter 25. While Israel lived in Shittim, the people began to whore with the daughters of Moab. These invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel yoked himself to Baal of Peor. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the chiefs of the people and hang them in the sun before the Lord, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, Each of you kill those of his men who have yoked themselves to Baal of Peor. And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation of the people of Israel while they were weeping in the entrance of the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose and left the congregation and took a spear in his hand and went after the man of Israel into the chamber and pierced both of them, the man of Israel and the woman, through her belly. Thus the plague on the people of Israel was stopped. Nevertheless, those who died by the plague were 24,000. And the Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the people of Israel, in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not consume the people of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and to his descendants after him the covenant of a perpetual priesthood, because he was jealous for his God and made atonement for the people of Israel. The name of the slain man of Israel who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, the son of Salu, chief of a father's house belonging to the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby, the daughter of Zur, who was the tribal head of a father's house in Midian. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Harass the Midianites and strike them down, for they have harassed you with their wiles, with which they beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of the chief of Midian, their sister who was killed on the day of the plague on account of Peor. Well, this is a very sad chapter. It's a sad chapter, and it's one that's, I guess, difficult for us to appreciate. But here we have uh, Balak uh, implementing a plan that it appears that Balaam had given him. In other words, Balaam couldn't curse the people of Israel, but he knew how to bring them down. And so this was a very, very sinister plot. And again, we see the connection, the relationship between idolatry and sexual immorality. They go hand in hand, as is the common picture throughout the Bible. So as, as much as this is difficult for us to appreciate, there is, a, there is a much bigger picture going on here. All right, let's continue. Numbers chapter 26. After the plague, the Lord said to Moses and to Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, take a census of all the congregation of the people of Israel from 20 years old and upward by their father's houses, all in Israel who were able to go to war. And Moses and Eliezer, the priest, spoke with them in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Take a census of the people from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses. The people of Israel who came out of the land of Egypt were Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, the sons of Reuben, of Hanok, the clan of the Hanukites, of Palu, the clan of the Paluites, of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the clan of the Carmites. These are the clans of the Reubenites, and those listed were 43,000. 730. And the sons of Palu, Eliab. The sons of Eliab, Nemuel, Dathan, Abram. These are the Dathan and Abram chosen from the congregation who contended against Moses and Aaron in the company of Korah 
when they contended against the Lord. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died, when the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a warning. But the sons of Korah did not die. The sons of Simeon, according to their clans, of Nemuel, the clan of the Nemulites, of Yaman, the clan of the Jarmanites, of Yarkin or Jarkin, the clan of the Jarkinites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites, of Shaul, the clan of the Shaulites. These are the clans of the Simeonites, 22,200. The sons of Gad, according to their clan, of Zephon, the clan of the Zephonites, of Haggi, the clan of the Haggites, of Shuni, the clan of the Shunites, of Ozni, the clan of the Oznites, of Eri, the clan of the Erites, of Arod, the clan of the Aradites, of Areli, the clan of the Arelites. These are the clans of the sons of Gad, as they were listed, 40,500. The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, according to their clans, were of Shelah, the clan of the Shelanites, of Perez, the clan of the Perizzites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites. And the sons of Perez were Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Hamel, the clan of the Hamelites. These are the clans of Judah, as they were listed, 76,500. The sons of Issachar, according to their clans, of Tola, the clan of the Tolites, of Pulva, the clan of the Punites, of Jashub, the clan of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the clan of the Shimronites. These are the clans of Issachar, as they were listed, 64,300. The sons of Zebulun, according to their clans, of Sered, the clan of the Seredites, of Elon, the clan of the Elonites, of Jaliel, the clan of the Jaliites. These are the clans of the Zebulonites, as they were listed, 60,500. The sons of Joseph, according to their clans, Manasseh and Ephraim, the sons of Manasseh, of Machur, the clan of the Machurites, and Machur was the father of Gilead, of Gilead, the clan of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Aizer, the clan of the Aizerites, of Helek, the clan of the Helekites, and of Asriel, the clan of the Asrielites, and of Shechem, the clan of the Shechemites, and of Shemida, the clan of the Shemidites, and of Hepha, the clan of the Hepharites. Now, Zelophehad, the son of Hepha, had no sons but daughters. And the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Terza. These are the clans of Manasseh, and those listed were 52,700. These are the sons of Ephraim according to their clans. Shuthala, the clan of the Shuthalites, of Becher, the clan of the Becherites, of Tahan, the clan of the Tahanites, and these are the sons of Shuthala, of Aaron, the clan of the Aaronites. These are the clans of the sons of Ephraim as they were listed, 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph according to their clans. The sons of Benjamin according to their clans of Bela, the clan of the Beliites, of Ashbel, the clan of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the clan of the Ahramites, Shephufam, the clan of the Shephamites, of Hufam, the clan of the Hufamites, and the sons of Bela were Arad, the sons of Bela were Arad, and Naaman, of Ard, the clan of the Ardites, of Naaman, the clan of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin according to their clans, and those listed were 45,600. These are the sons of Dan according to their clans, Shuham, the clan of the Shuhamites. These are the clans of Dan according to their clans, all the clans of the Shuhamites, as they were listed, were 64,400. The sons of Asher according to their clans, Imna, the clan of the Imnites, of Ishvi, the clan of the Ishvites, of Bariah, the clan of the Bariites, of the sons of Bariah, of Heber, the clan of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the clan of the Malkielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sirah. These are the clans of the sons of Asher, as they were listed, 53,400. The sons of Naphtali, according to their clans, Jazil, 
the clan of the Jazilites of Guni, the clan of the Gunites of Jeza, the clan of the Jezreites of Shilam, the clan of the Shilamites. These are the clans of Naphtali according to their clans, and those listed were 45,400. This was the list of the people of Israel, 601,730. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Among these the land shall be divided for inheritance according to the number of names. To a large tribe you shall give a large inheritance, and to a small tribe you shall give a small inheritance. Every tribe shall be given its inheritance in proportion to its list. But the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers, they shall inherit. Their inheritance shall be divided according to lot between the larger and the smaller. This was the list of the Levites according to their clans. Of Gershon, the clan of the Gershonites. Of Kohath, the clan of the Kohathites. Of Merari, the clan of the Merarites. These are the clans of Levi, the clan of the Libnites, the clan of the Hebronites, the clan of the Marlites, the clan of the Mushites, the clan of the Korahites, and of Kohath, the father of Amram. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Amram Aaron and Moses and Miriam, their sister. And to Aaron were born Nadab, Abihu, Eliza, Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died when they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord. And those listed were 23,000, every male from a month old and upward. For they were not listed among the people of Israel, because there was no inheritance given to them among the people of Israel. These are those listed by Moses and Eliza the priest, who listed the people of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. But among these, there were not one of those listed by Moses and Aaron the priest, who had listed the people of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall die in the wilderness. Not one of them was left except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Well, just a, a couple of um, things to think about here. Firstly, we read again in Numbers 25 of, a, of what's described as a plague, a, a, a mass dying of people. And in Numbers 26, the, the Moses is told to recount the people. And what we see is that they've repopulated very quickly despite these, these large losses that are recorded. So this is, this is interesting. And also we have the basis of organisation. So when... God organized the people to go into the, the promised land, the land uh, of uh, what would be known as the land of Israel. It, it was not done randomly. It was not done in a first in best dressed. It was done by, uh, firstly, by an equitable system. So the land was, was allocated according to the size of the population of that particular uh, tribe. So we see that firstly, uh, Hebrews take tremendous pride, unbelievable pride in their ancestry. And by naming these names and details, it adds a level of credibility to the, the account that we have here. That's, that sort of rebuts some of the arguments that the Bible is just fairy tales or made up. This is actual people, actual events that within the, the the family tree history being passed down right down through the ages, this can be verified. And we see, of course, that Jesus traces his ancestry or the, the biographers of Jesus trace his ancestry in Matthew through his father and in Luke through his mother back to uh, these tribes as well, uh, back, to, back to Judah in his instance. All right, let's have a look at Psalm 64. And it is to the choir master, a psalm of David. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the throng of evildoers who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows, shooting from ambush at the blameless, shooting at him suddenly and without fear. They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? 
They search out injustice, saying, We have accomplished a diligent search, for the inward mind and the heart of a man are deep. But God shoots his arrow at them. They are wounded suddenly. They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. Then all mankind fears. They tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exult. Amen. Indeed. David's confidence that no matter what his enemies would do, God would ultimately vindicate him. And in his lifetime, that was certainly true. So that psalm was proved to be uh, uh, verified in David's life. Um, I think there's, a, a, there's a, an important principle here when we read the psalms too. We, we sometimes can read that and go, well, that's what God did to David. That, that's what he did for David. And therefore, he will do it for me. Uh, not so fast. Uh, what we're reading is, an, is a, an account of David saying, this is my experience. And we know from history that, uh, and we can think of some godly righteous people such as John the Baptist. They served God faithfully. In fact, John the Baptist is one of those who the account of his life is one that he served God almost perfectly. And while his question sent to Christ, are you the one or should we expect another, was a moment of wavering and yet Jesus didn't rebuke him. He, he gave John consolation by, by the message and we'll see that when we get into the Gospels. But it just, I, I just want to point this out that God is able to protect and vindicate his people but if things don't go your way, it doesn't mean God's let you down. That's the point. And we see other Psalms where David felt that that was his case as well. And I think the point there is that he was still prepared to praise God. And so should we. So let's do that in our prayer right now. Father, we do praise you. We thank you, Lord, that even though we read things in the old accounts of Numbers that seem so strange, so foreign to us, that we know that you're a good God and you have a good purpose. And Lord, today, whatever your people face, may they know that your presence is with them. May we ever praise you, no matter what our circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching this. If you appreciate it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next Daily Bible Reading.